Welcome everybody. This is the actually the second Image Builders Special Interest Group um, meeting um, of the OpenShift Commons. And really thank you all for joining us. And if you have any questions or suggestions for upcoming topics, please send them to the mailing list um, or type them into the chat room here and we'll have a conversation after today's presentation. So what I've done um, today is invited Christian Roldan from Protoban, who has a large multinational deployment of OpenShift out there in the real world in production, um, to tell us a little bit about their enterprise CI CD workflow for doing um, deployment with containers and building those containers. So um, I thought what we would do today is let him talk for 20 minutes or as long as it takes him to do his demo, and we'll record that and other people can watch it. And then afterwards, talk a little bit about um, with each other. I'll just unmute everybody. Um, and you can ask questions of uh, Christian and his team, a number of whom are on the call. Um, and this is interesting for me from a couple of perspectives. Is This is definitely an enterprise approach to it. Um, we've talked uh, and we will be talking with other people who are doing, like if you've only got one service that you have to continually integrate and build Docker and maintain a Docker image. So this is going to be an interesting talk today to hear about how they're doing it um, across the enterprise. So Christian, I'll let you talk and introduce your team and um, folks ask questions in the chat and we will read them out at the end um, or try and answer them while the presentation is going on. So go okay. ahead. Perfect. So, uh, hello, well, my name is Christian Roldan. I work at the Frontman. So, in this presentation, uh, we are going to talk about our um, continuous integration uh, uh, for Docker images that we, we use uh, in, in our FAST uh, platform. We use um, OpenShift version 3.1. So I think that the, this is uh, this experience uh, uh, is really interesting to, to share with the, the community. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. Well, I'm Christian again. I, I am the, the past project manager. Here with me is uh, Julian Fernandez, who is our past uh, solution architect. Uh, he is, uh, he is the, 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 the project uh, leader for the continuous integration, the OpenShift continuous integration solution. Okay, so I, I will I will try to do a, a really short introduction, and after that, uh, Julian uh, we, uh, is going to explain more uh, more uh, more information about the, this this solution. So, uh, what is Pro One? Pro One is a global company. Uh, we are in nine countries, in, for instance, in Spain, Mexico, Brazil, the uh, UK, uh, United States, uh, Portugal, etc. Uh, we are more than uh, 5,000 professionals around the world. So, uh, Pro One is, a, is a, an IT company. We, we we are the IT operation company for the Santander group. Okay. So, um, uh, also, uh, it is important to uh, comment that uh, uh, Julian is from uh, uh, Isvan. Isvan is another uh, Santander company. Uh, Isvan is the, the software company. It's a software company. So uh, in this project, in this uh, project that we call Global Pass, uh, we are working together uh, for one and this one. Okay. So uh, what is the objective for the, the, the Global Pass? What is the Global Pass? Uh, well, uh, the idea is that we have to design, uh, deploy, and operate a multi-rational, private uh, pass solution. This uh, solution, this uh, path solution, is based uh, on containers. We we use container for everything. Uh, uh, on this uh, uh, 
past uh, solution we run financial uh, financial applications. So for the, this point of view, uh, the, the past environment is real, real uh, is a real critical uh, environment. Uh, so um, we selected uh, OpenShift uh, Enterprise version version 3.1 uh, for this uh, past environment. We started to work with uh, OpenShift version 2. Uh, we were working with that version during two years, more or less. Uh, and we started uh, with containers uh, two years ago. And uh, we decided to migrate to OpenShift version 3.1, more or less one year ago. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next uh, slide. Well, as I told you, the global pass uh, is a global solution for the uh, for Pro one. Uh, we deploy uh, OpenShift, uh, uh, different OpenShift cluster around the world. Uh, right now, we we the, we have uh, uh, up and running um, the Spain and Mexico regions. Uh, our idea is to uh, to have two more uh, regions at the end of the year. Uh, we we would like to to have Brazil and uh, and UK. So as I told you, we we we, we have two two important regions uh, up and running: Spain and, and Mexico. Okay. So from this point of view, uh, for us, it's a very big challenge uh, uh, in order to uh, to operate and and, and, uh, and design the. This path solution is really a really big uh, challenge. Okay. Uh, so what we have solved in this in this project? Why we we decide to uh, create a continuous integration solution for uh, Docker images? Uh, well, uh, well, we 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 have tried to 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 have the, the, the same building system for all the corporate corporate Docker image. We have a, a, a catalog of 10 corporate image. Um, we have, for instance, a, a Spring Boot a, a microservice runtime. Uh, we have a Tomcat runtime, uh, an Nginx, uh, Cassandra, uh, MongoDB, uh, uh, RabbitMQ, etc. So uh, we, we we decide to to to, to design uh, the same the build system for all the Docker images. So uh, 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 standardization for us is very important. So we the standardization uh, in this project is really really important. Uh, we use the the same. Uh, Git repository structure for all the images. We have the same folder, the same scripts, the same um, the same uh, metadata, etc. Okay. So the documentation uh, for the project we use the same format. We use uh, Markdown for for the uh, Docker image documentation. The tag naming is is really important. Uh, at the beginning of uh, the, 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 this project, we, we were using the la latest uh, level, and we found a lot of problems. And we decided to to to, to use another tag of naming. Uh, Julian is going to talk uh, about this uh, about this tag naming and how we use this tag naming. Okay. We also support our corporate images support uh, binary deployment. Binary deployment is a feature that we 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 have uh, in version uh, open OpenShift version two. Uh, we we implement some uh, binary deployment in in our corporate Docker images. Um, also. Uh, we we do some pre-processing and deployment of uh, open system template. Every corporate image has a open system template. We use that template to deploy the, the, the Docker in, in OpenShift. So 
when we update when we update the image, we also update the uh, OpenShift template. And after after building the, the Docker image, we deploy a new template in OpenShift. That is a very important important topic that uh, William is going to talk. Uh, also, we push the the, the the Docker image in our uh, corporate Docker registry. Uh, uh, we uh, execute different uh, unit tests. Uh, some some uh, corporate image are critical image. For instance, the, the Tomcat uh, or the, the, the microservice image are really critical. If we introduce some bugs we can affect the production so that's the reason why we decide to include the uh, unit test in every uh, in, in every docker image uh, project and also when uh, when the image is, is built and then if everything if, if everything works okay we we send uh, change log uh, to all the past uh, customers. Um, so uh, the, in the next topic, uh, we we uh, I want to talk about when and why we rebuild the Docker the Docker image. Well, the reason why we rebuild uh, are because the operating system is updated. Uh, every uh, a corporate uh, Docker image is based on Red, on Red Hat Enterprise Linux. We, we use uh, the base image from Red Hat. So if we receive a, a, an update, automatically we uh, update the all the uh, corporate image. Uh, also, we update when the product the product is updated. For instance, if we receive a notification that uh, uh, open CDK is updated. We also update the the, the Docker, the corporate Docker image. Uh, we also could include new features uh, or automation scripts. Uh, so for that reason, we also rebuild the image. And if we need to adapt, update the, the the template, we we again we rebuild the the, the Docker image. Okay. So in the next slide, um, Julian is going to talk uh, about the global solution, and also we we try to do a live demo. Okay, thanks, Christian. Hello, this is Julian Fernandez, and as Christian has told, I work as cloud solution architect in Isvan, and I'm collaborating with the Christian's team in the project Product One Global Pass. Today, I'm going to explain to you the continuous integration and continuous delivery cycle that we are running to implement, build, and deploy our corporate Docker image into OpenSea. Before to start the presentation, I think it's important to emphasize that when we start working with OpenSea version 3, we decide not to use the sort to image tool for building Docker image. How Christian has told before, this decision was taken because we have our own application lifecycle management team, and we are offering to the developers a binary deployment solution using the ALM jobs with our Docker Emacs. Okay, so let's go to start the presentation talking about the technical solution stack that make up the global pass application lifecycle management. Also, I'm not going to talk about it. Uh, Sorry, in this presentation, as you can see in this slide, we are using Jira and Trello to manage our project planning and to manage the support of incident of our customers. On other side, a Product One Global Pass is included into the new architecture of Santander Group called Serenity. Serenity is a group of assets that have a common roadmap and follow the current Santander cloud strategy. Here is the road the logo of our group, of our line, the Serenity Global Pass. Um, Serenity Global Pass is only one of the lines that are part of Serenity, maybe one of the basic lines of Serenity. Okay, and Serenity is using Confluence as wiki to share all the documents, documentation between the projects 
So we have the documentation of the Docker image in our Git repository and also centralized in Confluence. We are using Jenkins as the continuous integration engine. Everyone knows Jenkins, so I'm not going to explain how it works. I'll try to describe the jobs we are running in Jenkins, okay? All our source code is stored in a G repository, in this case, GitLab. All the image, well, Christian told before, but all the image have the same standard G repository structure. So far, most of this code is private, but we hope that in the future, we can publish it as open source. To store binaries, we use Nexus, and to store and expose the Docker image, we are using Docker registry. But shortly, we are going to migrate to Opway or Atomic Registry, where we still have to make that decision. In order the, to test the Docker image before building them, we use two tools implemented in Ruby called RSpec and Server Spec. I will dedicate some time to explain how to perform the test later. And finally, well, as you know, we are using OpenSea version 3, sorry, version 3 at platform as a service. Now I'm going to describe the workflow we are following for the continuous integration cycle of our Docker image. Well, I have to tell you that today I'm going to explain the process of release of the image. The development process of the image follows a different flow. As you can see in this slide, first of all, we tag the Docker image in JIT. Jenkins job are released every time a new tag is created on a Docker image in GitLab. So Jenkins check out the tab version into the Jenkins workspace, and once the image code is downloaded, unit tests and integration tests are executed. If the tests are passed without failures, Docker image is built with the corresponding tags, and later is deployed to the registry. The next, the next step is deploy the associate template in OpenSea. Jenkins is responsible for updating the image tag in the template to point to the new tag. Once the template is used in the OpenSea, we upload the Redmi mark Markdown file, I mean the image documentation, to conference. And finally, Jenkins clean up the workspace and notificate by mail the result of the execution of, of the job to the user subscribed to that image. Okay, well, to talk about the test. Now I'm going to describe how we're testing the Docker image. Our idea is to use the test de driven development methodology in the Docker image creation process. For this, we are using RSpec and server spec. Well, RSpec is a behavior driven development framework for Ruby. This framework can be considered a domain specific language and resembles a natural language specification. And server spec is a Ruby tool, very interesting tool, which allows you to write simple tasks to validate that a server is correctly configured. With server spec, you can write a respect test for checking your servers. In this case, our corporate Docker image are configured correctly. Okay, here we have two examples. Unit test verify that the Docker file contains all the specifications defined. Really, it executes a docker inspect command and verify that all the specs that I have declared in the RSpec file are included in the docker inspect response. I can verify the port exposed, the environment bars, working disk, package installer, users, or a lot of things. And the integration test verify request to server into docker image returns a wider response. For example, in the docker 8 image, we are checking that on port 1880, we are exposing a default application that returns the system environment variables. And also, here, we verify that you can access to the Tomcat management deployment policy. Okay, go to the real world. Here, I'm going to show you our engineers image test. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, well. it looks good. Thank. Here we have the unit test. We check that we have a working deal in OPT slash product bar. We have two environment bars. We expose the. Oh, sorry. 
this is another file. <laughs> One moment. Mm -hmm. Into this mm -hmm. test spec unit. Okay, this is the file. Well, the working disk, the environment bars, we expose the port 81, and we have some package installed. Go down. Okay. To the file, I'm going to, to show you now our integration test, okay? In the integration test, we test two applications, one in the port 18 and another one in the port 81. And we expect that returns the code 200, uh, the status code OK, and some HDML. Let's go OK now, go out and go to execute the test. I have one script to do it. OK. Uh, this is very quickly because I have the the image uh, pulled in my in my machine. Okay, now uh, we have the first test, the second test, and one test more. That is the integration test. Okay, we we're expecting. Okay, so everything is right. Now I'm going to. So you one Docker file, well, sorry, one R spec file with errors to show you uh, what happened when when something failed. Yes, this is no, this is no. <laughs> Docker file spec with errors. Yes, this one. Um, for example, uh, well, I'm not going to explain all the file, but here we are expected that the port 1919 is exposed. Okay, now I'm going to execute this test. Uh, Oh, a lot of fails. That, That's why we do that. Yes, as you can see, you can. Uh, there are the errors and and return the failures and the explanation of the error. For example, here we want the to expose the 1990 import, but we only expose the 443 port, the 18 and the 81. Okay, so go back to the presentation. And once we have checked that Docker image have passed the unit and the integration test, the image is built. We have a build cell script in all the image to make the Docker build process. This script contains all the variables needed to make the build process. And Jenkins take care of tag the image with the same tag name, tag name that we have previously created create in our G repository. The tag naming convention is the classic release convention, major chain, dot minor chains, dot fix, dot release. This is an example. And later we added the tag latest to this image. Finally, we push the image to our private Docker registry. Okay, now integrate our Docker image into OpenSea. OpenSea template with all the configuration required by the Docker image is in the same git repository that the reset of the image. Jenkins job handles for setting the value of the Docker image with value of the new tag into a template file. It's important to say that we are using the latest tag in our templates to avoid problems when we change the version of an image to our developers. Product global pass templates are tags as instant tab and with the Docker image name. Once the template has been updated, is deployed in the admin project OpenSIF of all available zones. Well, as Christian told before, currently we have three production regions, two in Spain and another one in Mexico. 
Okay, and to finish, we publish the image documentation. We are using conference as corporate wiki to serve between us the documentation, and conference exposed an API REST to publish documentation. Jenkins job take the Redmi Markdown file of the image and publish it in conference. Once the job is sent, Jenkins clean up the workspace and send an email notification to everyone who is subscribed to that image. And in this last slide, you can see some pictures of some of the features that I just described. The first one is our Jenkins dashboard. Luckily, everything is green. If one job is red, the green team can go home and think the job will be green. Well, this is only a joke, but maybe this will be the way to do it. And the other pictures uh, are to demonstrate the deployment of the image to OpenSIF as instant apps here. Mm -hmm. and the relationship between the template and the Docker image. Okay, and go to the real time. Yes, now, oh, hey, here we can see the Jenkins as well. Uh, we have one red, uh, so <laughs> someone will have extra time today. Uh, here we have an example of one image in the Docker registry uh, where, well, Christian Tola has have told uh, about the WordPress image before. And uh, here we have well, the first bill snapshot uh, tag, the three release we have. And as you can see, the latest is the same image, is tagged the same image that the 1.2.0 release. And the last one is to show that the Nginx template pointing to the tag 1.5.1. release of the image. Okay. Oh, sorry. Christian is told me that I have to maximize. Okay, so that's all. That's pretty awesome, actually, to see that whole workflow in action and the use of Confluence and Jenkins. Um, I'm going to open it up to questions now um, for anyone else who's on the um, the call right now. If folks are interested in that, I'm I'm very appreciative of the use of Jenkins in this. I'm a big fan of Jenkins um, and and the and the email notification process of all the subscribed users. I think that's a really um, interesting an interesting aspect of your your workflow. Let's see if yes, yes. You know, uh, you know, uh, uh, some some uh, Docker image images are uh, critical, so it is important to uh, send all the information to our customers. Uh, our customers are developers, uh, operation teams, DevOps teams. So it is important to uh, to send the change log to all the. Uh, uh, Past, uh, users. So this, for me, this is, a, and I understand that you're not using STI because you had all this tooling in place. Um, do you have any plans to incorporate STI eventually, or use it in you know, your developer worlds? Well, that, that's a really good question, Diane. Uh, we are. Um, we were evaluating STI, but um, uh, this uh, uh, CIDC solution is just for corporate uh, Docker image. Okay, so yep. for applications, uh, we 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 have another uh, uh, CIDC solution. Okay, we have a. a, a very interesting ALM solution, and in order to deploy applications on OpenSeed, we, we use a corporate uh, ALM solutions. Okay, that uh, ALM solution uh, uses uh, Jenkins. Um, so um, we were, as I told you, we were evaluating STI, but uh, we decided to use, we decided to use. Uh, our corporate corporate ALM 
solution uh, for uh, application deployment and not to get an local, local image and BDP yes. instead of STI. Yes, I talked before about the Serenity project and the ALM project, one of the lines of, of Serenity. And our developers want to have a binary deployment like the OpenSea version 2 or like Crowdfunding we have. Um, the better solution for us to do it is, is this. Okay. Well it makes sense. I'm not saying you should. I'm just I'm just curious if if the, if the end developers would use it. So I'm, we're you know because because that's because that's as an evangelist and a community manager. When I do my demos, I don't have access to all of the things that you have. So STI works quite nicely for me as a developer. Um, let me think. What is it? What other thing that I was thinking about in terms of so so far. I mean, you said you were using RHEL as a base image. Have you had to do um, a RHEL base image update across the enterprise yet? And how is that done? Gone? Is it? Uh, I'm sorry. Could you repeat your question? So, if you're going to update the underlying operating system, so you're using a base image, have you had to do um, a major upgrade on the operating system level across all of your images yet? Uh, yes, uh, when we deploy OpenShift um, version 3.0, uh, uh, we were using RHEL version 7.0. 7 7 uh, yeah. um, after that, um, after several months, we received a notification that uh, there the, the were a, a new uh, base. Uh, Rail available, and, uh, and we decide to rebuild all the images using Rail 7.2. Yes, currently we are running uh, Rail 7.2. And and so you used your CI/CD workflow to do the update of all the images. Yes. And it worked fine. Good. Yes. Yes, it's awesome. really an interesting solution. Simple and interesting solution. Uh, and it is important to mention that uh, it is not uh, this CI CD solution is not an, an ALM corporate uh, solution. It is just a solution for OpenShift for our past environment. Okay, we have another ALM solution for application deployment and building. Yes, it's for our Docker image. Um, maybe the next step is to include in this continuous integration cycle our configuration script or fancy ball or puppet, but that will be another uh, Yes. Yes. Another day. Another yeah. day. So let me look again. I'm, I'm looking to see if someone who is on the call has a question or wants to. Um, there's a couple in, in Spanish. So I'm not going to try and read those out, Matt. My Spanish is not very good. <laughs> well, I think that the, 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 there is no question. So, yeah. Uh, oh, and I, I have I have one more. I, I have lots of questions. So, um, because this is the image building process um, is is really different across different enterprises and and such. But I did have an interesting conversation. I'm here in Texas at OzCon. And there's a lot of open source project folks here, including the people from WordPress, since you used your example. Um, I'm wondering where you you got your, if, if you pull down the source code for WordPress and built your image from your own pull um, from WordPress.org, um, or if you used, if you started with one of the base images on Docker Hub for WordPress. Well, a good question. We, in the case of WordPress, we use the the official uh, WordPress that is available in the Docker Hub. Um, uh, well, uh, we uh, made some customization. Okay, we use the base image that is available in the, in the Docker Docker Hub, but we made some some interesting uh, customization in order to 
Uh, for instance, we have um, uh, big torrent synchronous file synchronization uh, software in order to synchronize uh, web content uh, when we have uh, several, several WordPress instances. Uh, we also uh, uh, have uh, some corporate uh, plugins and also some hardening uh, techniques. Cool. It's, I think I, almost everyone who does WordPress is, has, has some customization for it on the deployment. So um, you know, that's sort of what I expected for a response. But I also, I, I'm, I'm curious if people will start to have different versions of WordPress. So they'll need to build um, from, from the source code from WordPress.org. And, and, and you sort of answered my question. I think that the Docker Hub um, one is, is good enough as a starting point um, for building your custom image. Yes, yes. The, the, the only problem that we 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 are seeing uh, right now is that in the Docker Hub we we is not available the latest uh, version of WordPress. So yeah. uh, probably that's the reason why uh, someone is uh, preferred to build the image from source code. Yeah, yeah. That and that's what we found. I, I'm I'm curious to see and, and WordPress. I'm I'm not trying to pick on WordPress, but I'm curious to see how those images and Docker hubs get maintained and when they are upgraded. Um, who are the people who are maintaining and supporting them? Whether they're Docker people or WordPress people, and and that's kind of the conversation I've been having this week with the WordPress people, and um, trying to figure out you know, who's going to build the latest image and make it official and maintain it. On um, on Docker Hub or wherever, um, if if WordPress wants to host their own registry, so um, so that's that's um, I think you've done a great job because nobody's asking any questions at least as far as I can tell in my bad Spanish translations. Um, so um, I want to thank you for coming today and doing this presentation. I will pop it up on a blog post and on the YouTube channel and into the mailing list for the image building. I'm going to host another SIG in two weeks time. Um, and I'm wondering um, if people have suggestions for topics. Um, I have a couple of speakers lined up, um, one from the Atomic Registry program to do a deep dive into the registry um, and aspects of that. And I think I might use that as the next topic, but if people have other suggestions, I'm very open to that. If there's something that Protobon wants us to drill into around image building, um, let me know. Sure. Many thanks, uh, Diane, for, for this, for this, uh, uh, for this time. So it's, uh, it's really interesting to hear uh, our experience and solution with the people. Okay. Many yeah. thanks. Thanks. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful weekend, or no, it's not quite the weekend yet, but evening. Okay. Take care.